Stellaris D Ancient Relics DLC. This is a post audio recording because things happen in life and well basically you didn't didn't get to re to didn't get to record the audio for many many reasons. This is another lesson learned about uh, having a secondary input like a cell phone or anything else. So Currently, we are building up, and in this episode there are quite some interesting things going on that I'm actually very proud of, and also very, I wouldn't say intrigued, but I'm very surprised that they happened. So, currently, we are trying to expand the output of uh, consumer goods. The problem with consumer goods right now is that, as you may notice, we have a very small surplus coming in, and we're just we're just going through them very rapidly. Same thing for minerals, and we are not producing enough. I'm also surprised uh, that we didn't have a mineral purification facility there. I mean, Exocetus is just being left as it is right now. We're not gonna do anything to it until we get more technology. In regards to our fleet, because we are we're making some interesting rope. Uh, currently, we have 134 available, 102 used. Engaging hostile we're stations. We're gonna be expanding for future episodes. The importance of that is. We want to have a very large fleet. We're gonna need it. I mean, it's not that our enemies are very powerful, but it's just easier that way to move around. And, I mean, currently, as we are at war with the Chaos and uh, complete. the thing that we... The thing that, that came to my attention was that, yes, we may have three considerably large fleets right now, but we have them horribly distributed. I mean, they Our are troops just, just hit enemy going all over the place. Running. And yes, well, we might have one large ship that moves around and it's the core of the fleet. Uh, that's not helping us. That's definitely not helping us. Having one large army, that's also not helping us a lot. I mean, sure, it's, it's a concentrated army. Oh, nice. Loading. That extra 10%, that's pure gold. And if I'm not mistaken, we are going for the. I'm pretty sure we're going for the refit standards. I mean, that minus 5% on, on ship upkeep, that's very good. And also the ship upgrade cost, that's a general. That's, that's a good thing to have. Anyway. Um. So I was saying, so having one large army and many large fleets is not helping anyone. So we are building more as we move along. And obviously we're gonna start having them in different locations. One in the south, one in the north, one in, one in the core. The core one obviously is, is protecting our trade no other important reason for it to be there. I mean, it's, it's just a couple of carpets moving around. Um, the consideration right now that I was making for, for the Kalasan, I was thinking that maybe getting what's coming to them. I could take over... Well, not take over, but that I could make more claims. But there's one problem that I noticed. Um, and this I had noticed earlier. One is that the since we already declared war, we can't Hostile take over initiated for more claims on the planet that's occupied by one of our allies because apparently they have more rights to it than us. That kind of sucks. And the other thing is that I was considering maybe going for other. Uh, oh, nice! The final collision is, is finally between our grasp. Maybe that's the right 
right word? Anyway. So, I was considering maybe taking another one of the other planets. But, nah. It, 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 or assistant, rather. And here I was checking if maybe I could push for, for the... To make the Fino a subsidiary while we were at war. Because, honestly, the Fino are not a threat to us. It doesn't matter. Um, our subsidiary are actually not doing much right now. But again, since we do have an issue with this, the way sectors are being uh, worked now, I, I didn't like the fact that I will have to have just one sector and then there's another system that doesn't have anyone, but th there's no need to have a governor. There's nothing in it. Ooh, so we built just let it as it is. Now, here we're gonna find an interesting problem. So, I moved the main ship, the Herald, to, to fight the the Saturn War. The problem with that is that obviously, as we have seen in other episodes, um, the Grand Herald can hold itself very well against Corvettes. It can hold against itself against destroyers, battleships, and anything else, and even battle stations. Uh, not against for resource extraction. Not, not against Corvettes. Construction it's just, it's complete. Not for that. But we didn't lose it. The problem is. It's becoming more evident as time goes by that we need to have backup for the Herald. And what what worries me is that we're not gonna lose the ship. I'm pretty sure of that. That's, this ship is still very massive, very powerful for, Ooh, for an early game. I something. still think that this is very lucky. I mean, this is Iron Man, and you can see it. It's just this is just plain luck. That RNG. Mm, tasty. So, having this very early, quite, quite a game changer. I'm not gonna lie, and it's letting me play the way I wanted to play. Um, but here is where we're gonna see this. I mean, yeah, that's a massive 8K, 8.3 against 3.2. You would say, oh well, that should be an easy battle. But no, no, it isn't. Um, Destroyers go down very easily, just like papers, just... Uh, it's just... Just look at the numbers on the damage output. It's just massive. It's just... It's just incredible, the amount of damage that... That, that the ship itself can, can release. But that's not the problem. The problem is, Corvettes can make a lot of damage, and... Interestingly, I see this as something that I call the Master of Ryan Syndrome. Now you may be wondering what the hell that means, and why does Master of Ryan have to do anything with Stellaris, since they are two different beasts. But one of the problems that the original Master of Ryan had, the one from 1990s, 2, 3, 4, can't recall, was after Master of Magic came out. Uh, one of the things that you would find is that if you made the smallest ship, the Scouts, and you equipped them with Death Race, you could just pump out thousands Ooh, of them. We built and something. They will make so much damage, it will be so broken, and I think that's the problem with Corvettes, you could actually make very heavily armed Corvettes in the late game, and you could give out a pounding, as you can see with the Grand Herald. I mean, Corvettes against Corvettes, sure, that, that's always gonna be a, a, a battle of attrition. They're gonna kill each other, and you need support and whatnot, Hostile takeover but, initiated. If it's just Corvettes against huge ships, oh man, Corvettes are gonna have the win in hand, no questions asked. And if you had a good admiral, game changer. That's a game changer, and that's that's my opinion on how this is affecting me right now. And this is why I started. Like, if, as you can see right now, we have 147 available total for the fleet, and, and I keep, I keep upgrading this and I keep working up to this because we are going to need a, a very complex fleet. One that has enough support, the one that can move around. Obviously the army is not a huge concern here. I, mean, I, I can live with the I can live with the fact that the army is, 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 is something that we must have. And I'm still waiting for... Oh, we didn't have our... Okay. So, in this episode, I also want to start working on the colonies. Um, we're going to have three more colonies available. 
and afterwards we're, we may have a little bit more. Uh, but back into the armies. So the problem that I'm seeing with the armies is that we we have not seen a considerable change from the initial days of, of the armies. Yes, you still need armies to invade, but this this kind of feels like this kind of feels like it fell in Master of Orion, where you had armies and whatnot, and it's just like, oh yeah, we have to invade, we have to have an army, but fleets, fleets. And I get it, I get it. Armies are not the core of the game. Armies are just there to make the the naval invasion quotation marks and get the job done. That's it. That's that's. That is where that ends, and that's okay. But still, I don't feel that there has been any considerable changes. Uh, Boom. Okay, so we right now, something. our enemy still has three of the systems below. So we need to take those back before we end this war, because we're going to have to white piece out of this. Um, it's honestly, it's it's not impossible to win this war. It's just gonna be way too long, and we're not gonna be wasting time and resources on that. Period. It's just no. No, because we have other important things to do, like taking over the Fino Coalition, and then we have our neighbors to the north. I'm not talking about the, the caretakers. The caretakers can be there for all I care. I don't care about them being there. They can do whatever the hell they want. I am talking about our neighbors and next to the what's it called? Next to our to our latest ally. I just forgot their name. We just passed them. Um this anyway, tech had better generate some we revenue. Need to make, th the way I'm playing the game now is that while I'm always concentrating on having on having more and more space. Uh, this is not possible as a corporation. In a corporation, you get a huge penalty for that. And, I mean, I could compensate with the money. Sure, why not? But that's not the point. I mean, the, the larger you grow, the bigger the sprawl and whatnot. And that's fine. I mean, that mechanic is built that way. So it's just like, okay, so you want to get bigger, you need to get either more buildings and resources and whatnot to make your empire sustainable or suffer the consequences. I mean, if, if you are 300% over your your capacity, I'm pretty sure you're going to struggle a lot if you don't upgrade the buildings, if you don't have a large fleet and whatnot. And this, I think this is one of the, pro the early problems that we faced. Um, the uh, the growth was way too fast, way too fast for a corporation. Didn't have enough of a fleet. If if here's the thing, if it wasn't for the fact that we have the Grand Herald, we would not be here. We would not be the presidents of the Federation. We would not be assisting our allies with this war. We our would not troops be doing just hit enemy water. soil running. Seriously not be doing anything. Now, another thing that's bothering me is that our armies, even though they are very large, the combat width is not helping, and I mean, we're not losing that many. Construction complete. I'm also noticing that, that our enemies don't have their uh, their planets well defended, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to build the, the stronghold and the fortresses. I want to have very large armies on each planet in order to be sustainable and I mean this, this, if I'm not mistaken this also helps with keeping stability in check maybe wrong on that don't don't trust my word on that so anyway back on the matter at hand so we're we're way too large to be our corporation this is the reason why, why I, I decided to start spinning off subsidiaries the Fiend were going to be subsidiaries for a very long time. I'm, I mean, really, this, this, it makes absolutely no sense to have the Fiend annexed. I would like to do that. I would 
very much like to do that, but again, no, that doesn't make any sense. That sprawl is definitely gonna kill me. And I noticed that the Finu don't have most of their territory used up. And I made a mistake there. I made a big boo boo. I bought up the dem modes instead of we selling built them. something. And I needed to buy crystals because, uh, you know, you need crystals for everything. And I, I do like the fact that crystals seem to have an upgrade Boom. now. So, so this we is a thing. Something. Now. The, the, the crystal factory now has an upgrade so you can build even more crystals and I think that if this is the case we may be seeing something in the future I, I'm very hopeful of that about the moats and exotic gases and whatnot because there is a point in this game where that just gets out of control you need exotic resources for everything and they're called exotic resources for a damn reason I can't believe that in the galaxy there are enough resources to you know to to help everyone do their thing that's what also surprises me about the market I, I think that exotic resources should be far more expensive and I do understand the living metals row and all the Ship other stuff is cutting um, edge. yeah they, they are very expensive same thing for dark matter and we have enough dark matter to to piggyback on that like a lot we're probably gonna be doing that for a long while because I, I can't recall a real I think it's only for weapons for very large weapons and that's it I don't think there's there's any other reason for for, for those materials and maybe for mega structures I don't know which reminds me mega structures we may get some I'm still not sure uh, our purpose right now is to upgrade ourselves into machine level now you may be wondering why would you want to do that well in the lore that i wrote for this corporation after becoming what it is and after earth is lost complete due to many reasons there's just not one particular reason there's many there are two branches that this corporation is following one is biological one is mechanical now either one would make sense to be honest but doing, doing biological means going for the side technology and upgrading and whatnot. And I don't feel like doing that. I don't feel like going into psionics territory, even though the bonuses are super great. Um, but that, that, that ending, I mean, I, I know it's not mandatory to, to reach that far, to reach the shroud. And I am intrigued, though, about the new... I think there's new mechanics or items for the shroud. I'm not sure. Uh, but that's interesting. That's interesting. Maybe, maybe in another playthrough I'll check that. But for the meantime, no, I'll just go mechanic. I, I think it makes more sense to me, to be honest. Uh, a lot of people are gonna hate me though. I'm pretty sure of that. And speaking of the devil, since I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna say it's a problem. I'm not gonna say it's a problem. But since we're expanding way too fast. A lot, and I'm saying just uh, I'm not gonna say hundreds either. Or maybe no, maybe I should say that we're gonna need a lot of machines. I mean that that's why my priority right now it's after a colony is built, it's either genetic clinics or robot assembly plant. It's either one of them at the beginning, but you need I need to have both at this point. Yeah, robot assembly plants. If you don't have one, which I don't know why this plant didn't have one. Now you have it, and then the clinics, and if possible, I'll upgrade the clinics, and that's going to give us a very, very huge and nice boost to growth. And this is going to be for everyone, because that's the thing. If you get one, you get the other, and depending on what the planet produces, you get the next big thing, which could be a purification plant, an agrarian thingy, the electrical grid, whatnot. I have been missing on the cultural corporate side, corporate cultural site, whichever is the correct name. I have been missing on that. Uh, mea culpa. But again, as you can see, we're on the negatives. It's just a slight number of negatives for consumer goods. And this is a problem. I know that. I know that this is going to be our, our problem throughout the game. And the, I mean,
mean, that's fine. I, I don't mind it. But the amount of minerals that we have to spend for this, it's staggering. And it's bothering me a lot. So, going back to the matter at hand, it seems that we have finally arrived to the Lavis Imperial Southern Border, uh, where our enemy is, has taken some of the territories that belong to them. Or planets. I don't know why I keep calling them territories. The, the systems. And it's the same thing with with Crusader Kings, with Hearts of Iron 4, with everything. I, I call them territories. And I don't even know why. So, another interesting thing that I noticed is that High five. the... I cannot, I cannot declare war. I, I mentioned this. I cannot declare war on the Finnic Coalition because I cannot push the issue that they should become my subsidiaries. And since I can't do that, well, there's, there's no war with the Finnic yet. Okay. So anyway, time to get some money, some easy money, and then continue to basically just buy what we need. And now, th this is where we start getting into to a bit of an issue. Since we don't have the... Uh, and, and I know this is my fault. Since we don't have enough um, influence, we cannot push the issue of, you know, using the one of the edicts to get more minerals. Also, I noticed that since we sent machines to work on these planets, the machines still don't have enough uh, rights, I would say, to to be colonists. And this is a problem that's going to happen in both systems that are two worlds. Since they don't have enough rights, they can do it. Also, it seems that the that their rackets can't do that either, which is a real bother, to be honest. Don't know why Planetary production hub established. And I, I kind of want and not to go into that system and defeat all the crystals because I'm pretty sure there's a relic there. Uh, I'm pretty sure of that. So maybe in the future, but it's not something that's in the short plans right now. In the short term plans. Uh, right now, our, our main objective is to end this war, which is already going on for too long. And basically just just consolidate our, our our systems because it, as you have seen the last two world that, that we obtained it has uh, it, 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 it has a considerable something. large space for and, and I don't know why humans are being done there but it has considerable large space for mines so the importance of that is uh, with mines Obviously, we can get enough minerals to do all the other stuff. Now, the problem here is just that this is this is obviously not going to last us forever. We we need this this is the vicious cycle. We need to continue expanding so we can obtain more minerals. So we can continue expanding and yada yada yada. I mean, at one point I wanted to make the main exercises a an monopolis, and it will be the last irony to do that. Like it will be. I know it sounds silly to say that it's gonna be the ultimate joke to make Earth this just like giant consolidated world where everything that's commerce wise happens because we're the center of the galactic market but that's what's gonna happen basically this is what's gonna happen and I mean in a way I like it I like the idea but I can already see the mineral consumption from the planet. I mean, it's gonna be insane. Remember, when you have an Ecumenopolis, also, I don't think we have enough rivals, and I think we're not, we may not have enough rivals anymore. I think that's, that's gonna be our problem now. That, that's the reason why we can't get enough influence. But anyway, so the, the, the resource consumption from that planet is gonna be so, so big, because remember that you can build districts that are specialized. So it's consumer goods and alloys. That the districts build they, they don't do minerals they don't do food they don't do energy nothing at all they, they don't do any of that anymore the only three things that they will do 
guess alloys, because we're good, and entertainment for amenities. That's it. That's it. That that's as far as that will ever go, at all. So building on a monopolis, it's. Oh wait, no, there's no. I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm screwing it up. No. It's. I'm pretty sure it's alloy consumer goods and and. The spiral residences or something like that. I can't recall. Um, I'm, I'm confusing them. I'm, I know I'm, I may be confusing them with the with the uh, habitats. But anyway, it's the point here is complete. that's gonna happen. And I still see that we are still missing three of planets Ooh. again, as I mentioned we previously. I was thinking of thinking maybe something else. That's way too much influence and our deal with the high curator has expired with the curators rather why not i mean the high curator yeah because he's the one that's closing the deal maybe that's maybe that's right i don't know um anyway so this this war unfortunately is still not at an end uh we keep upgrading our fleets we keep making them bigger Bigger, stronger, faster. Still not enough. And and I feel that even though we have grown steadily, uh, even though broken, um, we have a compromise with, with our with our allies. We have a compromise with our allies, and uh, well, that's gonna be that for this episode. This is it. So remember. If you have comments, questions, complaints, um, anything at all, just drop them down in the comment section below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so. Thank you very much for tuning in, and have an excellent day.